afternoon. Can anybody, everybody hear me clearly? Good. OK. Um, some housekeeping jobs. There are seats out here. If somebody comes in, um, please feel free to tell them there are seats up front. OK. Before we start, um, I wanted to ask a few questions from the audience. How many of you guys use TikTok? That's it? <laughs> it's, it's difficult, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Good, okay. Again, how many of you use TikTok? Now that's better. <laughs> how many have you downloaded and used once, maybe? Okay, there's some hands showing up there. Okay, so this talk is about accelerating the recommendation APIs. So when you first open the TikTok app, you actually get a for you page. These are the recommended videos we suggest to our users. And it's important for users to have this experience when they first open the app that they get that lightning fast. So this technology which we're working around with open source tools accelerates those APIs. So what you're gonna learn today is how we use some of the open source software from this community and how we plan to contribute back to the community around our learnings. Um, just for the background, I've been coming to KubeCons for the last few years, trying to figure out a business case to invest in multi-cloud. And for the last two years, I couldn't find anything because we built our own data structures, we, sorry, data centers, we built our own edge sites, and we can do it way cheaper than cloud. This is the first use case where we are investing with multiple cloud providers, and we see value in this. So all the product managers who were hanging out with me here at the board meetings and CTO summits, thanks to them that they encouraged me to look at this. So this presentation is our first attempt um, in this community to start seeding some of these conversations around our learnings, how we use these tools, and we want to contribute back. So please be kind to us. We don't know the ways around here, right? So, and feel free to ask questions because this is very interactive and we don't have any agenda here. So it'll be very lightweight. It'll be a mix of a little bit product and business-like. If you guys want to think about multi-cloud journey, how to make business case, how to figure that out, and a little bit around technology, right? Um, I have to tell you that we don't have a demo today because this code is still closed source. We plan to open source to that code, and then we're going to demo it, because that makes more sense. Um, otherwise, it'll be just a show off. Make sense? OK. So before we start, I want to introduce um, the engineers here. I'm honored to present their work. I just make business cases and investments, but these are the guys who built it. Um, we are not TikTok. We are the infrastructure team inside the company, so our customer is TikTok. So just so that you understand what we do, right? I already explained that we build data centers around the world, and I'll explain how and how we run our own edge sites. But in this particular case, we are using some of the cloud providers to do it. So we talked about all this. Now, just to understand the audience here, I wanted to understand who wants to learn about us. How many of you are from cloud providers or work with cloud providers? OK, majority. Good. So I think this, this will be very interesting then. OK, let's start. So this is Global Service Accelerator. Um, it does few things around the value side. It improves our security, availability, and performance. What do we mean by these things? We'll go in detail, right? But let me dive into this first slide. The internet itself, the, the public infrastructure, or what we call as public internet, is not that fast. Big companies have invested a lot of money building their own infrastructure, um, figuring out how to connect to the ISPs, how to get to their end users fast. We are one of them. But still, it's very, very hard to build this infrastructure globally. So one of the key things we saw 
that cloud has invested a lot of money in the backbone. And when we move traffic on backbones, it becomes um, very fast. What we mean by very fast is the latency drops for our customers. And we measure these latencies around round trip times, and that's how we know. So initially, when we were looking to understand how to use cloud, we did these early MVPs in Brazil to move traffic to North America and see, is it for real that if you use somebody's backbone, it's faster? And the results were very promising. That's made us invest more around this idea. But if you look at this slide, it shows a very simplistic picture. This is not how the internet is laid out, and this is not everywhere possible. But in certain regions, we do have um, users connected through internet service providers to, to data centers, which are owned by cloud providers. And they have very, very strong backbone to route those packets or traffic to our data centers. Please try to understand that this is um, a business case which works for TikTok. It may or may not work for everybody, right? Because the scale we have, we can find value in these things and save money and also increase performance for our applications. So please do your own due diligence as we go through all these slides. Um, just a disclaimer, right? But in a sense, what we are doing is we are trying to hack the cloud's backbone for our own benefit. That's what it really is, right? So when we move the proxy near to our end users, there are a few things which happen naturally, and we'll go in a little bit more detail around security posturing. Because whenever we see traffic which is not ours or there's an attack, we can drop these packets faster instead of taking cost on our infrastructure. Because clouds uh, pricing is expensive when you move traffic inside them. So this is Global Service Accelerator. Um, just a show of hands, has anybody used any cloud provider's global accelerator? Okay, three, four, okay, good. So I'll probably, you probably will find similarity in this, but once we open source this code, you don't need to use them. You can use this. What it'll do is basically, uh, for us, what it does is it provides us neutrality across cloud providers and regions. So we can go in any region or any cloud provider, and where we see best value in terms of price or performance, we can put this out there, right? But it's very simplistic in the configuration, and you'll see um, how we have evolved it. It's going to look very similar to what other cloud providers provide you. OK. So this is a real picture for how we distribute traffic across the world. There are three big data centers we have, and these are located for the user's privacy. When we move traffic for United States, it stays in the United States. All the users are connected inside our data centers inside that same country. These are for compliance and regulation purposes, but it also helps us save money when we do these things. But there are three big data centers we have. Uh, one is in America, one in Europe, and one in Southeast Asia. So typically, when a user connects in to TikTok, the GeoDNS resolves it to a specific address, and that address is kind of directed towards where this user is coming from. If it's Americas, it's going to go to the American data center. This is how our traffic is routed towards the origins, which means that some of these things which we do with recommendation, they need a lot of compute and a lot of power. So they cannot be easily ported out to cloud providers. Although we are trying to do that for our own performance reasons, but there's a way that how we route this traffic to origins still maintains that sanctity of users in North America only stay within North America. So when we insert GSA, what happens is the picture changes a bit because we are moving out to edge. Um, and the definition of edge I haven't understood still. It's been a few years, but for us, Edge means something which is closer to our end users. That's all it means, really. Um, it doesn't have to be a mile away. It could be a region somewhere. So when we did, did these experiments I was explaining about Brazil, we are now expanding to other countries, right? So you see, we pick up the traffic from South America. We use cloud providers' backbone and hit origins in America, right? 
And we see clear value in there when we do this because our users' latency drops and that recommendation feed gets really fast. So people are more attracted and we see more growth around TikTok when people click on more videos and watch them. And so same principle applies across all three regions, uh, Europe the same way. We are taking and picking traffic from all the different countries and moving towards those zones where compliance needs are, right? We have just started on this uh, project. Um, we invested late last year, so we are already in production, but we are expanding it globally. So we're gonna start with the US, Europe, and that's why it's stage 23, 24, it's not complete yet. We are accelerating recommendation APIs, but there are other types of TikTok products which some of you use, like Live, and there are other things which also will be using the service later. So this is very, uh, for me, it's very complicated, so I'll try to dissect it for you. Um, hopefully, I'll do a good job. But if you look from left to right, this is our actual deployment. It may or may not be your deployment. Uh, there is a certain reason why we did this way. And um, we can go and ask, you can ask more questions from me. Um, and we have engineers here who built it so they can answer your questions well. But there are three types of traffic streams we get from users, HTTPS, Quick, and a WebSocket. Here the picture shows two cloud providers, um, cloud provider one and cloud provider two. These are two big gray boxes on your right. When the traffic comes, we get these Anycast IPs, which we conveniently rely on cloud providers to provide. So per cloud provider, we get an Anycast IP, and we know in which region, which is the closest pop for that cloud provider. It hits the load balancer. We know from our control plane, that's the boxes on the top, we can program these cloud controllers for these specific IPs. So we know exactly where this user is coming from and where it's getting directed to. Once through the load balancer, we mostly use the layer four load balancers. It goes into our proxies, what we call as global service accelerators. Now these are not, these are maybe, we can think of this way, these are high performance NGINX or NYs for lack of better word. Um, because at our scale, when we move millions of these queries, um, the technology starts to not work for us. So we did some improvements around there, and that's what we're gonna see our contribution would be to the community when we move and push such high volume of traffic. So we use cloud providers, uh, Kubernetes. We think it's um, best managed by them. Uh, shout out to all cloud providers out here. Um, I think they, they do a pretty good job with managing this layer for us. The value here is that we want to control our traffic, encryption, decryption, uh, users privacy, those are important for us. So GSA does protect that well. We care about their latency, their performance, Kubernetes and managed services like the load balancers, uh, we think as a commodity for us. Once you hit the GSA, there are a few things we can do in there. Um, we can not only measure how the end user performance is, because we have client-side code too to measure that, but we also want to know at each leg how much the latency is or how much round trip time it is. So we do that measurement. But more importantly, we actually program security policies on this. The most generic function you will find is this why application firewall and DDoS stuff, which is very easy to do that, right, in GSI. But more important is like advanced program, like hmm, there's a threat around here, how do you detect it, how do you program it? And we believe those things are more tuned towards um, how we see Edge is gonna evolve into being functional services, where you can write simple scripts and program this logic, and there will be an output for what you desire out of it. So GSA is a combination of all this. Not only Nginx proxy, a high performance thing, um, how we wire it in the network, how we use the cloud's backbone, but also all these programmability which we care about. Again, as I said, this may or may not work for everybody, but this is how we want to maintain it. Because we want certain amount of control in managing our user experience and managing privacy for them. 
And of course, this is like an end-to-end -end encryption, so we do all kinds of certificate management and rotation and all that cool stuff. We're still working on a lot of things because we haven't figured out everything. Um, but this experiment is yielding us a lot of positive results around cost savings and also performance. And again, um, it shows a very specific deployment, which we have today. Um, there are certain reason, reasons that exist. Because our recommendation algorithms need a lot of compute, and we still haven't figured out how to use um, cloud's resources for that. Um, but there is no reason any company has to do this. The origins can be endpoints within the cloud provider. So you see those origins, which are the, on the right side? They can move inside the cloud provider. Just giving you a sense of how flexible this is, this deployment pattern is. Depending on your needs, you can change and modify it. OK. So just to summarize, um, we built this because we want neutrality around all cloud providers. Um, cost, performance matters to us. More than cost, performance is most important. If we find value in having lower ex latency with certain cloud provider, we'll probably use that even if it is expensive. So the value side is it allows you to choose the best value for you per region based on endpoint cost or the routing cost. If you have used cloud, then you would know that the charging on the routing is very high on the bandwidth side. So you, you can be smart about which cloud provider to use where. It also gives you a unified operation and maintenance. So you don't have to go to AWS or Google or Microsoft Azure. By the way, I'm taking these names. That doesn't mean we are their clients. Um, it just means that you don't have to have DevOps team maintaining all these various cloud providers. You can own your destiny through having this unified operation and maintenance. And the key things which we measure is like this average RTT per service. How well are our users doing, right? The one thing which we do use, by the way, from cloud is this auto scaling features, which have been over the years developed robustly, and they help us to scale out because our traffic patterns are spiky um, based on region, based on time of day, based on events. So we want to rapidly scale and descale. So we do that in there. The other vector which we care about is the security piece. As I mentioned, there's full path encryption in here, uh, automatic certificate management. And we integrated these commodity functions like application firewall and DDoS in there. Because it's best to drop that packet sooner than moving it over your infrastructure and bigger cloud provider. The one thing which is we are actively working on is this function as a service component. I mentioned a little bit about around programmability. These program programmable functions, I gave you just a few examples around, but it's up to your creativity what you can do with these proxies and these programmable functions. We use it for our security management, right, inside the company. We use for what is called as header enrichment, when we want to put a route label, right, around any of these request response headers. We also use it to what I mentioned as privacy, when, and we'll go through that use case, when certain governments or certain regulations ask us to maintain that, um, third parties can prog program that, and where they actually decide where this data needs to be served out of, or where it needs to be stored. And that's what is so easy to do with such a technology. And as I mentioned, security policies, that's very easy to do when you just have to write a script and deploy it, and it works. So this summarizes some of the key benefits around GSA. I'm a product guy, so pardon me, I had to put this slide in. But this is how, if some of you want to make an investment, then you probably want to make this slide for your management to make an investment there. The one thing which was clear in discussions early on that with TikTok was that they care about not only improved, but stable latencies. Um, and that's very important to understand that you have this advanced telemetry where you can pinpoint the reason which leg is suffering and why. So we have controls around our user um, device side. We have these controls around the load balances telemetry, the proxy, 
and using the backbone to the origin. So we want to monitor that consistent performance. And that's important for us. More than anything else, savings, this is the most important value. The savings side came in later when we realized that if we push traffic through here, we can also save some money. Um, so we measured two things around there, the queries per second, how many packets queries are we serving for all recommendation APIs, and what is the throughput on that compute which we are using from any of the cloud providers. That means how many transactions per compute. This number will give you abstract in a way whether the health of the product is good or not, right? Just so that for your cost calculations. Some companies care about it, some don't, but this is one of the metrics we cared about. And one of the most important ones was the time to deploy. When we expand uh, across regions, especially our growth has been phenomenal in certain countries, we want to expand rapidly, so time to deploy matters. And that's why the use of these managed services where we we have a very small team. We don't want to invest on the commodity side. We think that should be easy if we were to give that liability to a cloud provider. And so this is another matrix of why our choices were like this. Okay. Now this is what we want to do for community. And I, I'm looking for feedback from this community. And we want to engage in a way that we understand the user needs better. But for TikTok, we do the hand-holding for them because it's a big customer and it has needs beyond, let's say, a small website or an app would need. But we think the configuration workflow should be very similar to what other cloud providers do, right? But it should be free. So we think if we can give you a workflow which is as simple as configuring accelerated IPs, which could be global, or per cloud provider, your choice, right? And you can enable some of these commanded things like DDoS protection, then that makes your life simpler. The only thing you have to provision is on the back end side is the listeners, where your traffic is coming to, right? There could be layer four, UDP TCP ports, whatever filter you want to configure, you can configure a listener there. There are certain companies which use layer seven application signatures, which are more advanced where you can insert a token from a user client and see whether this client is hitting this particular proxy. That also is possible in that. And eventually you want to figure out an endpoint group where your traffic is landing on, whether it's within the cloud provider or on the origin side. And you do want to have these endpoints which can auto scale because when the stress develops, uh, those are the points in our cases, the recommendation engines, right? So we do want them to auto scale and then Based on the traffic, they should be able to dial up and dial down. Otherwise, your costs are going to be um, exorbitant if you keep on reserving the capacity that way. So if you look at this configuration workflow, it probably makes sense for somebody to use it this way. Uh, we're still working on this. It's not complete for our open sourcing efforts. But this is how we think it should be laid out. On the other side of visibility, we think there are a few things we want to monitor. And we, this is not a complete list by any chance. But we want to see the packets that are put, the in and out. We want to see the bytes. We want to see the layer four connections. And we also want to see the layer seven connections. All these are um, cost related metrics as well, if you deal with any cloud provider. Right. And that brings me to the second point. We, in aggregate, we want to also give a picture when you work across a cloud provider. How much does the endpoint cost you there? Right, when you serve that much traffic out of there? Or how much is the routing cost, which includes both the load balancer and also the traffic cert? Because the cloud providers have different policies around how they use the egress or ingress bandwidth. And the most important thing which we care about is this RDT because it's fundamental to our business. So we care about the average RDT from both legs, from the user endpoint to the server endpoint. Okay, so this is, this is the thing which I was talking about before, the function as a service. Why does it make sense for Edge? Um, this this is, looks very simple picture, but it has a lot of these complications around compliance, where we have a team which is managing users' safety and data. They are the ones who are authorized to program a policy. Right. Um, 
we also have partnerships with cloud providers who are trusted cloud providers, um, and they monitor it, what's happening. So in this picture, we are sh simply showing a way where this particular piece of software you can deploy at the periphery of the cloud provider, program a policy, and hand over the reins to somebody else whom you trust. Right. And this way, we think these fast functions will be phenomenal for, for a global privacy concerns which people are facing today, where people can use this open source code and solve these problems. So coming to the last stage, what is our plan here? Um, you are in the talk today, so we're presenting our first attempt of using multiple cloud providers to solve a problem for us. We want to contribute a case study around this so that people understand in greater depth of what this was all about and how we solved it. In 2024, we plan to open source our GSA. These are some of the proxies I talked about, the high performance proxies. And these proxies will work across multiple cloud providers. The final stage is we want to open source our FAST, which allows you to program all these policies. Um, and you can be as creative as you like around how to program them, because they are very simple to do. So this brings me to the conclusion um, of this thing. But I wanted this event to be more interactive. So if you have any questions, I have the engineers who worked on this. Technology, I think those guys can handle. Business related, product related, I can answer. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. How does this how does this approach enable faster throughput, lower latency on the backbones? Throughput in terms of compute or traffic, both things matter to us. Throughput on the connection side of how much traffic are we pushing. Depending on the type of application, it varies. For certain applications, the latency is more important than throughput. So we program it that way. For certain applications, they don't care. It's just like, hey, I'm uploading images. So we'll program it that way. So that's a choice. Um, um, I have a question. Um, uh, two to three questions. One is, um, because this is um, such a big application, um, service used by like people all over the world. Do you see um, like like load fluctuation, like surge in a load within seconds or ten seconds, which can cause high latency in your application? I don't know, James. You want to take that? Yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, this is a good question. Actually, uh, when we uh, deploy our system, so basically we have some buffers. We can handle a certain amount of spike, so it's okay. So normally, so the short-term spike won't uh, cause a big delay, yeah. So otherwise, so they basically you provisioning the capacity is cannot meet the requirement. So for our case, we always have buffer on top of that. Okay. And um, second question is, um, so it seems like you are having like multiple like cloud like data centers, multiple regions. Are you applying any kind of um, like optimization, which is applied to? Uh, this multi regions with some global knowledge? Yeah, we do. Actually, uh, we have uh, multiple optimization for individual platform we may uh, cloud providers. So, for example, when we deploy our uh, proxy on top of uh, Kubernetes, so for example, or GKE or AKE or whatever, so basically we have to 
tune some parameters to get a best performance. So basically, when we deploy, it will depend on which platform are you deploy on, on then we'll use different parameters and uh, optimizations on different number. Like, is it L7 or L4? Uh, yeah. So in some area, we can spend for uh, layer four, node balancers, just pass through node balancers, use TCP, UDP, directly go to our proxy. So our proxy will handle four layer seven functionalities. But in some area or some uh, uh, regions, because so, uh, layer seven, uh, node balancer can get a better performance because it, it can uh, terminate the uh, layer seven traffic at the edge more close to the users. So in this case, we are spending for layer seven node balancers. So, so what I'm thinking as always, we look at the the the, uh, the quality first because the quality is the most uh, important factor for us. So we always made the the uh, factors the the quantities. So yeah, it depends. For example, in in the North America, the doesn't matter on their seven, their four, not the answer. Basically, the, the quantity is uh, comparable. It's, yeah, it didn't say any difference. But in some location, for example, uh, Southeast Asia, so then their seven, their four, not the answer have big, yeah, difference. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hey, thank you for the session. The two questions I have first is, so GSA, one of the key goal is the performance. So just curious, like, what are the open source technology you are using in, in your custom GSA to boost the performance? Like uh, the two things I'm looking, one is like, what is the size of the biggest cluster you have in one of the region, like one of the continental, let's say US uh, of Kubernetes uh, for GSA? And second is like, are you doing a lot of caching and what is the open source technology you are using that? So that's the first question, sorry. And the second question I have is like, the end server where I see in the architecture is outside. I know that can be a business decision not to move it to the cloud, but I'm just curious, is there any technical constraint you see with the cloud why you had not moved it to cloud? So what's a driver still not move it to cloud actually? So that's the second question. Um, let me take the second question. But So it's a business calculation. Um, the cost of running these recommendation schemes on cloud, unless we figure out a way to optimize on cloud, it becomes expensive. Um, so we are working on it. It's not that we don't know the value of it because we closely monitor even the latencies coming out of a GPU, right? So this is the hardest part, the network latency. If we solve this problem, the overall experience goes up. So we know that, but yes, uh, it's not, it's cost prohibitive. So it's charge. cost is the main driver? Correct. Okay. Yeah, cost. Okay. It's the cost. And so yeah. I, I will answer your first question. So currently we just start uh, in production. So you know, uh, phase one. So probably we have a couple, uh, uh, four, six clusters. So we told have uh, around uh, uh, 40,000 CPUs around, yeah, to 50, but we are growing very fast. So. Probably next year we, so in this architecture, so the number of CPU is not uh, a big issues because you can just uh, span as many any uh, Kubernetes cluster inside the region, so yeah. So I'm sorry, so the current all US TikTok users, I'm just giving an example, this is a live uh, for the, all the US, it's not? No, no, we, no we, this uh, is only for the uh, API. But for, for, for caching, caching we have another similar system. So this, uh, for, uh, you can think about this um, is looking like a, a dynamic content acceleration. So it doesn't handle the, the image and the files. For image, high is a caching system, is another system, similar, yeah. But it's, it's different. And it's, what's the size of the cluster you mentioned? Sorry, I, I didn't get that. Uh, for, you mean how, many for, nodes, how many nodes do you handle the cluster? Uh, currently, we, we currently, I can say, uh, Probably one, basically we, we are keep our uh, cluster at uh, basically uh, right side. For say we normally keep our one Kubernetes cluster around uh, 200 to 500 nodes. So we don't want to keep big clusters because our node balancer can hook to multiple 
Kubernetes clusters, then we can maintain, easily maintain, so 10 on 10 off one cluster, so yeah, it's much easier for us to maintain, yeah, multiple clusters rather than one big clusters. All right, cool, thank yeah. you so much. Hi, um, could you talk a little bit more about what it's like operationally to run this? Do you have service level objectives, SLAs? Have you experienced a major outage that you can talk a little bit more about? Yeah, uh, actually it's a good question. So uh, for SRA, basically we, because we have, uh, hmm, actually we have uh, uh, much of a similar system, provide a similar service. For this solution, we are building a service based on uh, public cloud providers. So we also have uh, uh, some service, we just use, directly use a commercial service, right? So basically we are, have end-to-end -end monitoring to monitor this uh, SLAs. So, but I, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't directly remember the SLAs because that SLA is handled by another team, by the SRE team, yeah. So basically we are provide a comparable or even better SLAs in commercial product. Thank you. Yeah. Um, TikTok is one of the biggest growing, so that's why it costs women to maintain it. But yeah, all other apps, yeah. So basically, any API heavy applications, you can do the solution. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with us today. Okay, thank you.